the last class uh, they started with Nepal. Okay. Must be we have spent uh, <coughs> Must be we have spent two hours, if I am right. So first class, I told you about uh, the soric mentals of a part. And second class, we spoke about the psychotic and syphilitic uh, expressions of a part. Okay? Any questions? If you have anything to ask, I'll be happy to take up. If you have nothing to ask, then we'll uh, continue. Hmm? Okay, nothing to ask. Tell her. See, now, uh, we also have a few uh, uh, you know, junior PGs who have joined in. So HEPAR uh, mind was exclusively told. Okay? So I mean, to keep them with the flow, what was the key factors that we discussed? The mind. We started with, very good, we started with sensitivity. Sensitivity related to what? What were they sensitive about? Probably that's what uh, which will be coming up here also. Good. Sensitivity at the level of uh, mind and at the level of body. Hmm? So at the level of uh, body, what were the sensitive things that we saw? Cold. Not the level of uh, mind. So they were very sensitive to? Cruelty. Uh, noise, yes. And they were sensitive to sight of blood. And they were also sensitive to accidents. They are the kind of people who can't see accidents. Okay, very sensitive. Sensitive to uh, the other parts, pain and all, which will be taken up under uh, the uh, physical sensitivity. So emotionally, uh, we started with they being very affectionate, very sensitive, fine. And slowly, we saw how hepar pathology will progress. Okay, that's what I told under Sora, under psychosis and under syphilis, where they will have all those uh, destructive thoughts, Fine. Killing others, killing themselves, all those things. Okay. Anyway, this was just a small gist. We will uh, continue and uh, this was the image which you already saw uh, when I started introducing HEPAR in the first class. So this I told you denotes how sensitive the person is. Okay. So and we were also trying to understand that this sensitivity of HEPAR is both at the level of uh, mind and at the level of body, okay? Which I have just briefed you at the level of emotions and at the level of uh, body. The physically also, HEPAR is very sensitive. So what is that physical sensitivity that we see in HEPAR? Yes, well, they are very sensitive to cold. See, your PG students, HEPAR is already done in your uh, UG, okay? So we are just trying to uh, refine and we are trying to give you a better picture of HEPAR. Okay? So first thing what you have to remember is HEPAR is very sensitive. Sensitive to cold air. Okay? So when we focus on the physical sensitivity, what we realize here is physically HEPAR is very, very sensitive to cold. Now if you read... Uh, or many of you would have read, if you remember uh, what Dr. Kent has told about HEPAR, or even simple Alensky note, what they have told about HEPAR, that is very important. Now what is that you have in HEPAR? You see a lady here who is covering herself. Okay? Now what is it that you have in HEPAR? Yes, good. Cannot bear the slightest draft of air. To the extent, Kent says, if the window is open in the next room, he starts feeling the cold. Okay? Fine? So that is the sensitivity you have in HEPAR. Very sensitive constitution. Okay? And uh, talking about that sensitivity uh, to air, cold air, even, uh, now, which remedy comes to your mind if you look at this particular image? Sorenum. Ah, sorenum. Very good. Why sorenum? Even in summer, they want to wear a fur coat. That's again what uh, Alan says. Fine. They want to be warm even in the hottest weather. They cover head to foot even in the hottest weather. See, so each constitution, how they cover is very important. Okay? Fine. So now here, for example, you have HEPAR. HEPAR will be covering throughout. 
it is compared with swaranam even during summer hepar wants to be very warm very warm okay so sensitiveness to cold air draft of cold bringing in lot of complaints we'll see what are those complaints a little later or if you want we can finish what uh, what are the sensitive to what are the sensitive to see the first point i'm trying to tell you here is the physical sensitivity under physical sensitivity we are looking at the sensitiveness to air draft of air now which are all the bodily parts that will get affected and what will be the results as a pg learning we'll try to go one step ahead you know that they are sensitive to air fine so for example hepar is very very sensitive when it comes to ears if they go out under cold air hepar patient generally wants a very nice covering ears are very very sensitive similarly head is very sensitive many complaints related to head many complaints related to ear many complaints related to respiratory tract they come after hepar gets exposed to cold air i hope uh, this part is clear so what will cold air do in hepar okay so it can give rise to bad headaches bad sinusitis or otitis many times we have uh, patients come into our clinic sir otalgias i got bad uh, ear pain today morning i went for a walk weather was very cold and i forgot to carry my muffler and you know then i landed up with uh, ear pain so earache headaches sinusitis or bronchitis cough asthma all these things which will come after getting exposed to cold air you can think of hepar now what else hepar is sensitive physically what else hepar is sensitive to we were talking of hepar is sensitive to cold air now what is it hepar is also sensitive to is sensitive to pain pain yeah i'll come to that a little later hepar is sensitive to pain now why there is sensitiveness in hepar why there is sensitiveness huh? so you will have to go back to this pair of action hepar acts on the nerves okay hepar acts on the nerves and it will cause over sensitiveness and that's where it comes very close to chamomilla coffee nakswamika these are few remedies who are very very sensitive to pain and if you track back these remedies they have a very important action on the nervous system okay so acting on the nervous system you know uh, it causes sensitiveness they very sensitive to pain hmm? very sensitive to pain now what is the effect of pain in hepar very good hepar they go to the extent of fainting fainting from pains i just share a small case we had a lady a teacher school teacher who is around uh, late 20s 28 29 year old lady and uh, this lady you know during dysmenorrhea uh, even now you know before coming to me she would faint so fainting pains from you have some 28 or 26 remedies top two remedies are uh, hepar and and hepar and hepar and chamomilla i mean i told you there are some 26 to 28 i am talking to you about those two remedies which are given in uh, block letters chamomilla and hepar okay so tomorrow you have a patient who faints with pains you can think of uh, this two remedies on a broader uh, thing hepar and uh, chamomilla see now chamomilla is again very different now how will chamomilla react with pain we saw that and how will hepar react with pain if you remember the first hepar class should i go back first class uh, hepar i showed you some slides yeah good suicidal pains from because of pains they can go to suicidal uh, thoughts might come because of pains again some eight nine remedies here hepar is one remedy 
ये लेकर से सेपिया नक्सवा में का ओके हेपारिस बन रहे मेरे चमोमिला विल नॉट गो टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ सुसाइड बट चमोमिला कैन बिकम वेरी इरिटेबल श्रीकी हिटिंग अदर्स दे कैन गो इनटू रेज दे कैन गो इनटू एंगर फ्रॉम पेन और देर अगेन सो सेंसिटिव दैट दे कैन फेंट दैट्स वे सम आता सेस द निकनेम ऑफ चमोमिला इज कैनॉट बेर दे कैनॉट बेर पेन्स में भी वेरी मिनिमल डिसमेनोरिया टूथेक एनी पेन बट फॉर चमोमिला इट लुक वेरी बिग फाइन सो एक्जैजरेशन गुड दे एक्जैजरेट सी नॉट दैट दे एक्जैजरेट बट देर बॉडी कैनॉट टेक अप पेन्स एंड वर्स्ट सिनारियो विल बी चमोमिला इन लेबर दस द बैड कॉम्बिनेशन फाइन एंड आई हैव टोल्ड यू लाइक लेबर वर्ल्ड इज अ ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस सी आई मीन वी से इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस आई नो द लेडी should be going through a lot of pain but uh, to understand the remedies labor ward is again a very nice uh, uh, area to apply to see how each lady see all of them are in labor again see the individualistic uh, uh, approach individualistic reaction i was sharing one case uh, that's why bharat was laughing when i said uh, labor ward uh, I, i don't know if i shared this we had once uh, a lady from uh, you know uh, i was working in uh, A hospital no not working it was during our internship we were posted to a government hospital and there uh, one lady was scolding her husband very badly i hope you understood you did everything and see why <laughs> i am suffering and you know she was very abusive and uh, she was very loud and she wanted us to bring him and uh, she wanted us to make him realize what i am going through and she was very abusive a, a lady from uh, low socio economic group and you have different uh, constitutions you have pulsatilla there Okay, you like chamomile there. Chamomile, they'll be literally shouting, "Doctor, I can't bear this. Please uh, do C-section. I, I can't take it anymore." And sister would have just told, "Madam, you have just started. The pains, you know, the intense pains are yet to come, but chamomile cannot take." Same with Naxamika, Kalika, Pulsatilla, Sepia. This lady whom I was trying to tell was Sepia. She was abusing her husband. See, because of you, what I am going through. and then it was a nice uh, uh, observation if you know you can start observing and labor ward uh, again we have got beautiful remedies actia uh, simisifiga uh, wonderful remedies sikel belladonna lot of remedies which can do wonders so getting back here for example labor pain any pain hepar can can go to the extent of fainting because of the nerves which go into a sensitive mode or sensitiveness of nerves okay and they go into uh, this pains they can't take pains okay so pain one thing and uh, dr samida was talking of uh, touch what is it hepar is also sensitive about is touch they very very sensitive to touch now can i have some remedies touch arnica very good arnica chamomile yes one more ha huh? Callus, good, very good. Callus, ah, I'm happy. We are having some uh, interaction. Now, what happens in arnica? Yeah, arnica basically uh, aversion to being approached. You need not touch them also. Just your approach and you talking to them, they will not like it. Approach, touch, more of arnica. And why in arnica that they will not like uh, touch? because of those sore pains fine and why they will not also like you approaching them they doesn't like to be talked they doesn't like to be uh, disturbed they doesn't like to be touched okay for example if you are phosphorus and arnica is a patient and you homeopathy or a phosphorus so we'll have a bad habit of uh, you know uh, either we expect touch or you know generally phosphorus are very affectionate and friendly they go out of board and you know they go talk and they try to comfort which arnica will never like fine so our constitutions will also tell what we are so arnica will not like touch very good and somebody was talking of chamomile yes again the nerves are in a very hyper excited state so they will not like uh, touch arnica may not shriek or arnica may not 
uh, shout, but chamomila can shout. Chamomila can become abusive, don't touch me, blah, blah, and all those things. Okay? Now, what will Kali do if you touch? What will Kali do if you touch? See, Kali will go into startling. They're going to startling. See the remedies. See, the stimuli is what? Touch. The constitutions are different. Arnika bere, uh, Kali bere, and uh, the remedy we also spoke about, Chamomila. Fine? They're different. And one remedy you missed was Lachesis. Like I said, it's also very, very sensitive to touch. E.A. Farrington, if you read Ophidias, first chapter, Clinical Materia Medica by E.A. Farrington. Beautiful. He gives you the reason why touch aggravates in uh, Ophidias. So all Ophidias, very sensitive. Okay? Now, here, again, touch, for example, if you touch their skin, if you touch their... Uh, Injured part or the ulcer, skin ulcer, if you touch, they are in a very sensitive state. So sensitiveness to touch, skin in general is very sensitive. Okay? So one uh, point that we have tried to explain in detail is uh, physical sensitivity, sensitiveness to cold air, draft of air, sensitiveness to pain, and sensitive skin itself is sensitive in uh, HEPAR. So any clarification here related to the physical sensitivity of HEPAR? Any questions, anything you would like to ask? No? We'll go ahead. Okay. So the second key point in HEPAR, yeah, I mean, this shouldn't have come. Now, our, let me ask you, what is our characteristic in HEPAR? First thing is their sensitivity. Today's class, we are focusing on the physical uh, uh, characters or physical generals. Like I told you in the last class, we will not go from head to toe particulars. It will be a little boring. So I am just giving you the practical hints which you can apply on a larger uh, scale. Okay? Now, uh, I asked you a question. What else is characteristic in HEPAR? Apart from the sensitiveness. Okay, you have something to do with discharges that will come up. Yes, the tendency to suppurate. If you read Allen's bold letters he gives, little injuries suppurate. The tendency to a pus formation. Okay, so acting on skin, hepar. Okay, what you see is it has a great tendency to cause uh, pus. Any small injury can so quickly go into pus formation. So, now my question is, where all do you see uh, pus or where all do you see abscess in a part? Which are all the common organs? I have given you a list, but uh, not necessary, that is the end of it. I have used the word probable areas where a part can produce abscess. Eh? Okay, okay, very good. Hair follicle. Beautiful, good. I, it's not there. Now you understand why I have asked you this. Now what is that condition? Folliculitis. Okay. Many times we have uh, people coming to our clinics. Where there is hair, no? There they will have uh, infection. There they will have pus. Okay. For example, they would have gone to barber. They would have gone to a parlor. Fine. And uh, some uh, uh, procedure is done and the new hair, whatever is coming, uh, that's all infected at the root. Beautiful, good. Folliculitis. Could be. Very good. Apart from that. Good. Tonsils. Now, one thing you have to remember. Using the knowledge of anatomy can be of some help here. How? How? You can be more uh, systematic. Now, uh, Swati is talking of tonsillitis. Little above, anything can happen, anything you can expect. Okay, peritonsillar abscess, quincy. Okay, chalo, good. What is? Okay, there can be problems with ears. What is it? Pus, pus. Okay, furunculosis. What is furunculosis? Huh? Huh? 
కరెక్ట్ ఓకే వేర్ వేర్ ఎవడ ఓకే ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ యునో ఈవెన్ హియర్ ది హెయిర్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఈవెన్ దట్ కెన్ గెట్ ఇన్ఫెక్టెడ్ ఓకే ఫర్ అంకులోసెస్ ఇట్ క్యాన్ బి వెరీ గుడ్ రెమెడీ ఫైన్ అండ్ సిమిలర్లీ ఇఫ్ యూర్ లుకింగ్ ఇన్ టు ది మౌత్ ఇఫ్ యూర్ లుకింగ్ ఇన్ టు ది మౌత్ ఐ ఎమ్ పర్పస్లీ స్కిప్పింగ్ సిఎస్ఓఎం బికాస్ ఐ వాంట్ దట్ టు కమ్ అప్ ఇన్ ది నెక్స్ట్ స్లైడ్ ఓకే ఫర్ అంకులోసెస్ ఫలికులైటిస్ మౌత్ 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 gums yeah what do you expect in gums ha eh? okay good uh, premolar abscess gingival abscess okay these are few common uh, conditions that you can think of gums abscess in gums now going down Ab- follicular uh, tonsillitis or quincy suppurative tonsillitis quincy you can think of uh, hepar so gums we have covered and uh, we have also covered quincy think where is the possibility of abscess can happen perianal abscess good i have not written there but good good thought perianal abscess i forgot perianal abscess ha huh? yeah nails what is it salon paranokia good salon is there good anything else that you can think of ha huh? lymph nodes good yes lymph nodes glands glands memory abscess many times in allopathy they do i n d and they drain it out so what is it memory abscess and uh, peri tonsillar abscess and uh, peri anal abscess good any other areas where you can think of abscess ha huh? okay uh, infective see all appendicitis will not have pus good but shweta good good so there are certain uh, uh, appendicular infections which can go into suppuration good and there's an emergency you know it will burst and then uh, it's a big thing acute abdomen okay good so one more very important thing from your uh, pathology and medicine hepatic abscess liver abscess okay then uh, you, breast we spoke salon we already spoke ovaries ovarian abscess okay and then we we also have uh, lungs now the next question that comes up is see i have told you that uh, is a very good remedy for abscess what is that question that should come to your mind is as a pg student as a practitioner when hepar so what will be the indications of hepar in abscess first question and again as an extension what are all the other remedies two small components will come up here so mini you started with something when hepar okay when the point appears fine that's what uh, dr mino has got to very good beautiful puru has got a point when the abscess is sensitive to touch good is a point i agree with it so when there is pus and when you have uh, uh, sensitivity good then anything else so when is you can think of a part see uh, basically there will be inflammation okay and there is abscess and then there is sensitiveness to touch then and what you also have in hepar the discharges for example it opens okay i'll give you the uh, cyclical remedies when bell when hepar all those things a little later so when your discharges which will come up next what is the character of discharge also will discuss okay so hepar when the affected part you know when there is pus and when it is sensitive to touch okay that's one point now what are the other remedies silesia calcarea self very good mark belladonna good ha huh? gun powder good very good abrotinum sir okay i am not very sure but uh, vaishnavi is talking of abrotinum which will just uh, confirm okay abrotinum when hepar fails okay 
in furuncles okay anyway we'll take it, take that statement with a pinch of salt she'll anyway confirm and uh, i can uh, give you that particular uh, point so what we are trying to understand here uh, students who have joined late is we are talking of uh, abscess or we are talking of characteristic symptoms of hepar under that i am trying to explain the tendency for pus formation in hepar okay we are all here pus formation and when you indicate hepar and we have come to the point where we are trying to discuss other uh, similar remedies okay now somebody started with belladonna hope i heard it right bell was there good so when when do you think of belladonna so who 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 defines first stage how do we define first stage good Bef before before pus sets in good yes see whenever belladonna comes redness is very very important okay so before pus sets in when there is inflammation when there is redness and the affected part is hot these three things redness inflammation first stage of inflammation and of course you have uh, what heat heat in that situation we think of belladonna good now any other remedies silicia when silicia huh? okay see fine we know from books we have uh, read silicia when given in uh, low potencies and frequently if you repeat silicia it will uh, hasten first hasten first formation suppuration okay now uh, yeah so generally ideally silicia is given once the uh, you know abscess burst open what will silicia do when you give once the abscess burst open is healing yeah drainage it can help and healing it will it will help in granulation tissue or to make things very simple inflammation the redness we give belladonna and once pus starts setting in we give hepar and once there is full pus we give merk 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 don't forget merk in between and once the abscess burst we give silicia it will drain and it will also help in healing these are the four uh, commonly used cyclical remedies indicated for abscess apart from this four which other remedy should come to your mind calcareous sulf yes see calcareous sulf uh, from what i remember what i have read when silicia fails after silicia when silicia fails uh, silicia has to do some job of draining and uh, bringing in granulation tissue when silicia is not doing that job the remedy is calcareous sulf hmm? okay then any other remedy don't limit only to five what is it carbo animalis good uh, what is it that you are special in carbo animalis abscess of glands okay when the glands they go into suppuration fine uh, better remedies phytolaca phytolaca again is a glandular remedy okay i don't know much about the suppurative part this also a good remedy for quincy yeah cake like abscess of the breast good okay but never use phytolaca in my clinical practice so i can't uh, comment much but it is there for uh, ca breast hmm? see a uh, simple remedy is arsenic 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 when arsenic when arsenic huh burning very good good there will be a lot of burning and uh, when the abscess threatens to turn into gangrene okay when the abscess is turning into gangrene and bad burning and you know burning is better by warm application or warmth that is arsenic okay similarly meenu was talking of gunpowder see me being a, a classical person gunpowder again i don't know much but uh, once we had a case when i was a student okay there uh, one of my teacher had prescribed the uh, gunpowder first case i have seen in my life this girl no very young girl entire body she had uh, small uh, pustules entire body 
high fever and entire body was filled with uh, pus, pustular, I mean, pustules, pustules. And there one of our sir, uh, he had given uh, gunpowder, repeated doses of gunpowder. And within uh, three days or seven days, you know, next visit, she was uh, absolutely fine. That's the only case I remember uh, about gunpowder, okay? So gunpowder, again, uh, when you have uh, uh, that septic kind of conditions, okay? As a specific, gunpowder can be used. Uh, you can also think of uh, Ophidias, lachesis. What is the indication of lachesis in uh, abscess? Uh, eh? Bluish. Purplish is more of tarantula, tarantula cubensis. Recently I had a case, one of my assistants had uh, shed only the pick. Uh, looking at the pick, uh, I said give tarantula. Tarantula cubensis, not hispanica. And a uh, lot of burning, almost like arsenic. Okay? But you will have a purplish tinge. That is tarantula. Bluish tinge is more of uh, uh, ophidias. ophidias. Okay? You also have anthraxenum. What is the indication of anthraxenum? Yes, malignant. See, one word, uh, one sentence our stalwarts have told about anthrax. When arsenic fails, see, anthrax is a remedy we don't use very often. We are more comfortable with arsenic and uh, uh, what uh, uh, such kind of remedies. But you give arsenic, but burning and the abscess does not disappear. Then you can think of anthrax. Naturally, they'll have uh, black tar-like discharge. If they have all that, it will it will be a plus point for you to prescribe uh, anthrax. Okay, fine. So, belladonna, hepar, murk, silesia, calcarea self, okay? And uh, we also spoke of uh, gunpowder, arsenic, fine? Uh, tarantula cubensis, ophidias, inapsis. Okay, so uh, Dr. Vaishnava confirms after hepar in furuncles, I mean, meaning when hepar fails in furuncles, okay? So she says uh, from the uh, book, it is abrotenum. Okay, it's a new learning. I never knew about abrotenum. This uh, part of abrotenum. Good, anyway, thank you. We'll get back. So, separation, you got an idea. Where indications of FR and the comparison. Any more uh, contribution, any questions here at this stage? Hmm? No? We'll go ahead. Okay. See now, this is what many of you were uh, trying to tell. And what is it that I've tried to show you here is discharges. HEPAR has its own characteristic discharges. When you talk of, uh, we'll see where discharges and all, we'll try to understand. Now, what is that characteristic discharge you have in HEPAR? Huh? Yes. Good. The color is what Dr. Swati is talking of. It's yellowish. Accurate. Okay. Accurate. More than accurate. What is it? Cheese like. You agree with cheese like? Or you want to add something before, something after? Rotten, huh? Rotten cheese. See, cheese like means it's a nice feeling. Cheese lovers will enjoy. Huh? Fine. But here in Hepat, uh, Kent says, in books it is given, old. Old means, way back they did not have uh, refrigerators, correct, no? So, old cheese or rotten cheese. So, when you allow the cheese to rot and then you experience the smell, that is the kind of smell you have in Hepar. So, beautiful. Two nice things that I have told about Hepar. Yellow and uh, uh, rotten cheese, good. Two more uh, uh, characters that will complete HEPAR, discharges. Okay, more than sticky? No problem, it's not, maybe sticky, maybe thick, I'm not very sure. But something that will, uh, that is worth, uh, eh? okay, very good. Elam says, offensive, good. Naturally, rotten cheese, it is offensive, good uh, presence of mind, very good. Offensive, then, 
What is one last thing? It is something common to calcarea. The discharges of calcarea, sir. sir. See, hepar, I told you, is a combination of calcarea and sulfur. So, what you also have in hepar is sar discharges. Any other remedies that comes to your mind? Calcarea, rheum. Rheum. Very nice remedy. Rheum. What is it that is given in books? In spite of, in spite of washing, in spite of bathing, that sour smell, sour odor of the body remains. It will not let go. Okay? So sour discharges, as Dr. Elam says, offensive, old cheese and this is yellow. Okay? Now where do you see discharges? Quickly. Where do you see discharges in hepar? Discharges can be? Again, see, anatomy. Don't... Uh, uh, see where all you can expect discharges. Fine. So one common sight that I've already showed you in the uh, PPT is discharges from ears. Otoria. We are talking of CSOM. Okay. When there is discharge, and the discharge has the following characters, you can think of a part. Otoria. Good. Any other oria? Nasal. Good. What is that nasal thing you have in uh, hepar? Good. I'm happy. Nasal. See, if you have to finish this pair of action also, hepar has a beautiful action on the mucous membrane. Fine. Acting on the mucous membrane only, it will bring in a lot of uh, changes. Okay? So, coriza. Good. Can somebody complete this? All case of coriza, can you think of hepar? Hepar is generally thought of when the coriza is ripened. Okay? Meaning, when you have all these discharges, ozina or thick, uh, Dr. Kuru was talking of thick, now we can use that thickness here. Thick coriza, sorry, thick discharges, thick nasal discharges, which are yellowish, which are offensive, sir, it smells like uh, rotten cheese, then the remedy is hepar. So, nasal discharges, discharges from ears, where else? Huh? What is it? Very good. Leucoria. Leucoria. Good. Good. Any other area that you can think of? Huh? So, your leucoria, this is something uh, you should not forget. Discharge from the eruptions, skin eruptions, are discharged from the ulcers. Okay? And uh, discharge which we just finished from the abscess. Hmm? Perianal abscess or uh, breast abscess, any abscess. Okay? and uh, nasal which we finished and this is very important even the sweat of a par smells all this not only is sweat the body odor the body odor of a par can have all these features okay fine probably this tells us about uh, this tells us about the sulfur element of uh, a par the offensiveness, uh, the yellowness, all those things. Fine? So this is to do with discharges. What else we have in HEPAR? Um, yeah. What else we have in HEPAR? What is the character of pain you have in HEPAR? Splinter-like pains. Now what exactly you understand by splinter-like pains? Pricking. Okay. See, splinter means Something like a needle, sharp, small, but sharpness not big, small and you know, which is sharp. So splinter like pains, one. And second, they also have a sensation. Eh? Very good, Dr. Ashwati, fishbone sensation. Fishbone sensation where? Throat, okay, fine. And stitching pains, okay. Now, which are all the other remedies that comes to your mind? Very good. Nitric acid. Good. Silesia. Good. One. Okay, I'm, I'm talking of uh, splinter like pains. Retania. Good. Very good. Agreed. Retania. We'll come to it. Where in Retania? Rectum. Good. 
see, uh, retina has that uh, splinter-like pains in rectum. Okay? Hepa has splinter-like sensation in throat. See, though we have remedies, each remedy will have an affinity. Retina will not be there in throat. That's what you need to understand. But one simple remedy you missed. Ah, very good, Dr. Krishna Das. Argentum nitricum. Okay? So, splinter-like pains that uh, in HEPAR, this splinter-like sensation is mainly felt or seen in throat, urethra and eyes. Hmm? You are talking of nitric acid. In nitric acid, this splinter-like sensation is mainly in the eyes, in the throat, in the rectum and the urethra. Uh, rectum is one area you need to add. Argentum has in throat, rectum and urethra. And retania is there in rectum. Retania, it is there in rectum. Okay? Fine? So, moving ahead, I was also trying to tell you about uh, this fish bone sensation. Okay? So, that's with pains. And uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, this is coming a little early, meaning I, what could be the other probable characteristic symptoms? What else? I know I have already, the image has popped in. Take a minute's time, act as if you are not seen, you are thinking and uh, then you can answer. What could be the other characteristic uh, things in uh, HEPAR? Huh? Yes, so exactly one minute, asthma. <laughs> okay, good. Now, what is special in HEPAR? Better by bending head backwards. Okay, good. See, now I was checking the symptom, at least in uh, complete, in repertory, this is not there. But in our Materia Medica, this symptom is there. Asthma, better by bending head back and sitting upright. Sitting upright, and bending head back, ameliorates, okay, is HEPAR, okay. But repertory gives four different remedies. Now the question is, which are those four remedies given in your repertory? Asthma, respiration, asthma, bending head backwards, ameliorates. Is the question clear? So which are the remedies? Four remedies. I've given you the number so that uh, you are clear. The top remedy is spongia. Okay? Followed by verat, belladonna and chamomilla. Spongia I've used verat, bell and chamomilla. I have not used in this situation. But as a material teacher from the source books, I don't know why it is missed in uh, repertory. We, we may have to have a, we may have to think why it is missed. But in repertory, I mean, sorry, in Materia Medica, HEPAR is mentioned under asthma better, bending head back and sitting erect. Okay? Now, one more important component of HEPAR. What causes asthma in HEPAR? Very good. We saw that sensitiveness to cold air, exposure to cold draft, causes lot of uh, complaints in HEPAR. Hmm? Okay? Now, one more very important uh, respiratory complaint that we have in HEPAR is cough. What is the cause for cough? See, uncovering any part of the body. Cough from uncovering any part of the body. Fine? Meaning, is so sensitive that, for example, if his hand is exposed to cold air, that is enough to trigger cough. He has to wrap himself well. Okay? So cough, uh, pneumonia, bronchitis, asthma, all those things you have in APAR. And APAR is a remedy we commonly use in clinics for respiratory affections. Hmm? And the idea of doing HEPAR is we will have to think and use HEPAR beyond respiratory. That is the idea. Okay? So, asthma which comes up after suppressed skin eruptions. 
you are talking of exposure to cold, absolutely right. But you should also remember that asthma comes up after suppressed skin eruptions. Okay? Other remedies? Eh? Very good sulfur. Correct, sulfur. Only sulfur. Ask. Okay, what will happen in cupram? See, remember, uh, though cupram also has suppressed eruptions, in cupram you'll have nervous affections. Okay? Suppressed eruptions will give rise to convulsions, chorea, any nervous affection, you can think of cupram. Okay? Here, I'm talking to you, you specifically about asthma. Very good. Sorainam, one three mark remedy. Sorainam, pulsatilla. Carbovage, Dalkemara Sulfur Epicac. Okay? There are a few more remedies. Some six, seven more remedies you can uh, check in the repertory. But these are the uh, remedies which are given in high marks. Okay? At least Sorainam and Pulsatil are three mark remedies given in your repertory. Okay? Now, one last symptom. One last characteristic symptom of HEPAR and uh, then we can close. Very good. Without showing the image. Good. Urine runs perpendicularly. Not runs. Okay. Urine falls or urine drops perpendicularly. Now imagine, I know many of you guys are imagining what is this. Urine, uh, uh, Dr. Antadri, uh, US imagining. Good. See, it's very important. You imagine, fine? Okay, imagine a man standing. Or if you can't imagine, I'll show you the image, don't worry. Fine? Uh, okay. Now what is happening here is, urine is falling perpendicularly. What does this mean? Very good. The stream is less, the force is less, beautiful, good. So indirectly what is it trying to tell you is, the bladder muscles, okay, are not functioning well. The bladder muscles are weak. So the flow is getting affected. And urine is falling in line. So perpendicular means it's just dropping like this. So this is because of uh, weak bladder muscles, first point. Now second, how do you look this rubric in your repertory? How is this represented in your repertory? That is important. See now, why I am trying to tell that is important, I was checking, and when I was checking, HEPAR is not the only remedy. All these days, I was of the opinion, HEPAR is the only remedy when urine is falling in line or it is falling perpendicularly. Your repertory gives another 16, not one or two. They give another 16. So if we are not aware of looking into the repertory, we miss the other 15. Are you getting my point? And we blindly think only HEPAR and if the patient does not belong to HEPAR, we miss the case. Hmm? So what is the question? How do we look this statement in our repertory? Which chapter? What is the subrubric? Okay? You don't want to look under urine? Bladder, urination, very good. Don't open your phones. Bladder, urination. Good. Eh? Forcibly. Forceless. No problem. As such, people have confusion with so many rubrics. And if we start contributing forceless, streamless, <laughs> then it will become difficult. Stream slow. Good. Eh? Feeble, good, very good, feeble. All those things I checked, it's not there. Huh? Bladder weakness. Bladder retarded. Huh? Who is it? Very good, Krishna Das, dribbling. No, that's it, no? Like, you, know, you keep contributing. <laughs> Some stone will hit the fruit. <laughs> good, anyway. I mean, uh, no, we'll take it in a right thing. Dribbling. Okay? See, the rubric is, Bladder, you can add bladder, urination, dribbling, drops of perpendicularly. 
This is how it is given in a repertory. Now, the more you understand repertory, the more uh, options you'll have. More remedies are added. Huh? And you should know where to look for which symptom. That will come with uh, experience. And experience comes with practice. I am 20 years into practice. I can't say this. I'll have to keep seeing. So don't wait. After 20 years, I'll get to know everything. Unless you start seeing, you will not get it. So please make the habit of seeing. Make mistakes, no issues, but cultivate the habit of looking into repertory. Very important. Now the next question, you know what the next question is. Which are the other 16 remedies? Done? So think now. I know you can come up with something. Huh? Very good. What is it? You said Epis. Okay, you said? Sabal. Sabal, good. Now, why, why Epis came up? Yeah, you see, must be this word was misguiding, dribbling. In Epis, also urine dribbles. But when does it dribble? It dribbles, why does it dribble? It is more of UTI. Good. Infection. It's more of UTI. Hmm? They pass in drops. And what is the speciality of Epis? How is it different from uh, Epar? In Epar, uh, he is not shouting. He is okay. You are going perpendicular, you are going <laughs> vertical, you are going three, four. Epar is okay, but it's going. But what is the problem in Epis? What will happen in Epis? He starts uh, shouting. He starts, uh, you know, uh, literally it's, it's, it's a painful process there. Infection, UTI, fine. So going drops is a different pathology. Unless we know pathology, then we again go wrong. We give a wrong remedy. And we blame homeopathy. You're getting my point? That Krishna Das was talking about Sabal. Yes, now why Sabal? Why Sabal will not come into this picture? Where will Sabal come up? Why will Sabal come up? When the prostate is enlarged and that prostate is putting pressure on the bladder, it is more mechanical, then there may be a slow stream, done. That is Sabal. But what will happen in Hepar? What will happen in Hepar? Hepar, the muscles are weak. The bladder muscles are weak. So the urine is falling like that. So the remedies that will come up, uh, you were talking of, uh, both of you spoke of same remedy, causticum. Now you will all come with uh, paralytic remedies. Causticum is one. What is the remedy that comes very close to uh, causticum? Huh? Gelsemium. Okay, gelsemium. Fine. And uh, can you think of another remedy? Huh? Very good, selenium. Alumina. Alumina is not there, alumin is there. No problem. One more remedy with this situation. Huh? What happens in Perara is a different situation altogether. Perara, he has to literally lie down, press head against the thing, knees. It's a very uh, different situation. Dysuria, and you know, the position that he is using in Perara Breva is a uh, Bravo position. <laughs> Not all of us can. Uh, <laughs> I say, that's why I say, Bravo. Bravo means brave. It's a different position. But that is the position Pereira will be using and he will be comfortable. Okay? Now, uh, one more remedy. They have to strain so much. Again, there the muscles are weak. You know that remedy. Zincum, what will happen? Zincum, it is stool, if I'm right. Stool or urine? Yeah. Urine only. He has to bend back to pass urine. Okay, this is not the situation here. One more remedy. In Saraswati, one more remedy. Huh? Very good, beautiful. Muriatic acid. Muriatic acid. Fine. Now, what happens in muriatic acid? Huh? Very good. Related to this? Good. When they pass urine? So, when they pass tool, no? urine, what is it? What is that symptom here? 
Ah, when they are strain at stool, urine comes out. Fine. So that is also there here in muriatic acid. Recently, for one uh, anal fissure, fine. Amrish, anal fissure, we had uh, given uh, muriatic acid. Okay. First time, I had used to muriatic acid in anal fissure. What was the indication? Don't tell me, sir, your case, you gave, <laughs> how we will know. But that indication is there in uh, your uh, materia. Very characteristic. You remember that? Dr. Swamiji has seen that case in the clinic. And that guy beautiful improved. Actually, he was planned for uh, surgery. He was planned for surgery. He has come with all the surgeon's report to the clinic. One uh, far relative had referred. And uh, that guy beautiful improved. He did not even turn up after second follow-up because he's better. What is that indication? Better by heart. Uh, yeah, stools protrude when urinating. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> sorry, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. MRI is protrude, protrude while, while uh, urinating. Good, agreed. One more remedy. Bareta cup, good. Bareta cup, beautiful. See, this is how we uh, refresh our materia medica. But my question is not answered. What is that? Huh? Okay. Fine, sudden lapias. Okay. Yeah, so there is something very important in muriatic acid. It's very sensitive. Pain is very sensitive. We are in India. We don't use, uh, uh, what is it, tissues. Fine. We have a different uh, uh, traditional method of <laughs> cleaning. So what, how you elicit that symptom? See, that, that was put uh, abroad. And there they use uh, uh, tissue papers. It is very sensitive even to that soft tissue. Paper is what? It is highlighted in muriatic acid. But how do we give it in India? Fine. So this guy, you know, meaning uh, it was so sensitive, you could not even touch. That was what was converted. And uh, muriatic acid, 200, single dose. Did wonders. 15 days after which he came, and the first question he asked, should I continue medicines? Because I'm feeling absolutely fine. He had to fly back to Dubai because of lockdown. He's stuck in Bangalore. Beautiful case. Single dose of muriatic acid. Sensitive uh, hemorrhoids are sensitive fissures. I'll not use the word sensitive. Over sensitive. Very very sensitive. That was muriatic acid. So we'll get back here. Few remedies. Selenium melum was talking of. Causticum, gelsemium. You also have creosote. You also have muriatic acid. Netremure, sepia, and few more, rare, I have not included. You can always go back and refer your repertoires. So urine falls in a line or urine drops out perpendicularly is the symptom given in apart. Okay? So to sum up, you know, this is just the revision part of apart. Almost uh, three solid hours we have spent for apart. Any quick questions or anything you would like to ask, clarify in HEPAR, I will be happy to take up. To sum up, uh, two components we have discussed. One is uh, the mind, which again was told. Mathematically, how HEPAR evolves is what we have discussed to us. And one hour we have tried to spend on the uh, generalities or uh, physical particulars or PQRS, however you want to call, you can call. But trying to give you a broader picture of HEPAR, which you can apply under head what might happen, in eyes what might happen, nose what might happen, ear, lower down, you can start applying, which I'll not do. I'll just leave HEPAR here, okay? So any questions? Any contribution, any comparison, you want me to take it up, feel free. Correct. Okay. Yes, Dr. Bharat has a question related to potency. See, uh, ideally if you read the source books, what is told is when you give it in low, it will uh, increase, hasten. When you give it in high, it will absorb. Okay. For example, 
see it all depends how big the abscess is if it is a big abscess giving a dose of silicia and we can't expect it to absorb fine but we are talking of smaller things okay ideally it's always better you push it out you drain it given a choice in my clinic i don't give higher potencies and uh, we don't abort or we don't uh, uh, what is it uh, absorb that mechanism we don't do we generally hasten the process and you know we see to it it is uh, drained out so coming to the potency 30 generally hastens okay higher it generally absorbs but i would always prefer hastening and uh, clearing it up okay hmm? see i mean uh, uh, hepar uh, has its own limitation that uh, till the pus sets in hepar then you will have to immediately switch over to mark and uh, silicia okay any abscess that i have showed you here felon is a common thing we get in clinic fine okay and we might also commonly get perianal abscess uh, hepar can do wonders but see in which stage the patient has come and uh, then decide is already come with pus then hepar may not be a nice remedy to start with you can directly start mark okay and you can follow it up with uh, silicia hmm? anyway valid question any other questions then we'll stop okay then thank you